So first off, one of my favorite things about keeping these guys is this little dance that they do. You can see that they're twisting every single fin that they have. You know, this poor male's just really putting on a show, but you know, I have never seen them spawn, ever. It's just always the males being flashy and the females acting coy. It's really funny. Okay, so this is the expanded pygmy sunfish setup here. Okay, so I set up um, some pairs for spawning in these one gallon jars and there's also a pair in here. Oh, actually, if you get down here, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can, there's a, there's a male right in the center that's about to start dancing. Okay. How do you know he's about to start dancing? He's in the, his ter- look, they're in his oh, territory. There he goes. Did you get him? Kind of. Kind of, yeah, I got him. <laughs> Before he tucked himself back into the weeds here. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, you want it to be pretty heavily planted. But I found that you, if you make a little like stage for the male, kind of in the front here, it, but you sur notice how it's surrounded by plants so they feel safe. But there's literally a little stage for him on top of that clay pot. The male will come out and display there. So you can kind of control where they display actually. Show sure on how big you are. Hmm? No. It's like, nope. So there are a couple ways that I breed pygmy sunfish, okay? The hardest, the absolute hardest part again is that their fry are minuscule. We're talking like tiny, tiny. I wish I had a microscope to compare them with baby brine shrimp because they are just tiny. I think they're like a tenth the size of a brine shrimp. Like it's hard for me to even describe how small they are. Like they are microscopic basically. But anyway, to overcome that, what I do, I have two different techniques. Technique one is to have a super established tank chock full with plants. You can see tons of plants in here. This also provides enough cover. So let's see where he is. where is he? Okay, this provides enough cover so that a lot of these fry can survive. I would say this guy is about a month old at least. They grow really fast. They start out tiny and then they grow actually quite fast. But you can see I have a ton of plants in here. Some of the plants I have, um, a lot of hornwort, a lot of java moss, java fern, um, and a lot of algae. They like to lay their eggs in super fine-leafed plants, okay? I have bladderwort in here too. I don't know if it's like eating a bunch of the babies or not. <laughs> I think they're fine. Um, but tons of cover in here. I have a sponge filter. They don't need filtration, okay? I have some gravel. You can see there's a lot of like microscopic organisms in there. The goal is in this setup is to have a super established tank that will foster the growth of a lot of infusoria, lots of microscopic things for the babies to eat, okay? Um, and I certainly don't discourage algae. In this tank, there is a male and a female. To be really successful, you need to separate them out into pairs, maybe trios. Otherwise, they will eat each other's fry. The parents don't eat their fry. Other Elasoma will eat other elasoma fry, so ones that they um, that aren't the parents will eat fry. Um, and um, if you, you'll want to have a separate tank just for pairs that you aren't breeding, so this is my quote unquote grow out tank that's like two and a half gallons. Um, and I'll usually this is where I put the pairs that I'm uh, just holding or pairs that I'm going to sell soon. Um, you know, I have three or four pairs, just a small colony in here. And you can see they hide a lot. That's fine. I have a couple of little Heterandria formosa uh, as dither fish. They're cute. So the other way I can do it here is I have one gallon jars that, again, are stuffed full of plants and mops and just I throw in everything that I can. A lot of fine-leaved stuff like this java moss in here. I just introduced a pair in here, okay? And it seems cramped, but they're fine. 
So here's another jar. I had the pear, just like this one, I had the pear in here for about two weeks and then I pulled them out. Let's see, there's a ton of fry in here. Let's see if we can't get some in the video. Again, they're small. You can see there's some algae. Oh, there's one. Okay, there's, there's a lot in here. There's over a dozen little guys. There's some, okay. They stay in here until they're, um, I don't know, like maybe half an inch, and then I'll transfer them into the larger tank. Okay, there's a nice big one. And again, the older fry will eat any younger fry that fit in their mouth. So that's why you have to constantly move them around. It's so nice that they they can live and spawn so easily in these one gallon jars. Okay, so that you can have a lot of different units. But anyway, um, I would devote like, um, I don't know, two, three tanks to pygmy sunfish. They don't require a lot of space. I feed them, I feed the young ones baby brine shrimp, different kinds of worms, welter worms, banana worms. And then um, the adults, I feed um, almost exclusively grindle and white worms. They really love that stuff. I think that it really helps them grow really well. So, and there, that's my favorite guy right now. He's huge. He's like not a pygmy anymore. Anyway, hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any other questions.